mental health. Not to mention the amount of time she'd be separated from her children and the distress that might cause her. The Princess of Wales is well aware of what's required of her and is very much looking forward to the trip. The fourth installment of Netflix's historical drama leaves us in the midst of Charles and Diana's marital woes. As Prince of Wales to shore up one of the key countries in the Commonwealth at a very delicate moment politically, and thanks to you... Thanks to me, people have shown up. Thanks to me, people are interested. No, thanks to you, people are laughing in my face. And at the end of Margaret Thatcher's reign. So what comes next? The final episode of the fourth season of The Crown is not so much turning the page on a chapter of history as leaving the book wide open on the table and slowly backing out of the room. In War, the tenth episode of the most recent season, we leave the royal family as Charles and Diana's marriage is about to break and Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher leaves office after 11 years in power. The fifth season will be concerned with the following decade. The 90s. A turbulent time for the royal family which saw three marriages fail, the publication of Diana's tell-all biography, and a fire at Windsor Castle. Park of Bulls to get in touch with you. Your ex? Why would you do that? Because she's great fun. All during what the Queen called her, Annas Horribilis in 1992. The decade ended in further pain for the royal family, with the car accident that killed Princess Diana in 1997. A place like that horrifying. Everything I do seems to horrify Increasingly, you. yes. The 90s are rich with history to inspire the crown, but with the present looming ever nearer, it will be interesting to see whether the focus falls on the lesser known moments. There's not enough to definitely say, yes it is. Rather than the headlines we all remember. It seems likely that this time period will be more condensed, as series creator Peter Morgan has a 20-year rule, precluding events as recent as the Jeffrey Epstein scandal and the drama surrounding Meghan and Harry. Still, let us speculate about the big moments which might make it in. The many failed marriages of Windsor. In 1992 the marriages of Prince Charles, Princess Anne and Prince Andrew publicly crumbled one after another. The unhappiness of her children is something which has haunted the Queen during the Crown, and these relationships ending undoubtedly put the monarchy under strain. As we saw in Favourites, the episode in season 4 in which she summoned each of her children for conversations, perhaps the many failed marriages of Windsor will be fused into one, miserable. But something as important as the marriage of the future monarch. The opening of Buckingham Palace. In 1993 the Queen announced that Buckingham Palace would be open to the public for the very first time, ushering in a new era of openness. We've previously seen the Crown highlight these moments of modernization, such as Prince Philip pushing for his wedding to the Queen to be televised for the first time, so this may well feature as a marker of changing times. $200. Although enamored by the palace and royal souvenirs, visitors may have little luck catching a glimpse of the royals themselves. The Last Days of John Major one recurrent motif of the Crown has been the conversations between Prime Minister and Queen, which speculate about what might have been said behind closed doors during seminal moments in history. The series is in fact adapted from Morgan's play, The Audience, which showed the Queen meeting with Prime Ministers throughout history. Morgan's original play actually begins with an audience with John Major in 1995, who finds his government in crisis and his days numbered, so we may see a similar scenario unfold in the Crown. Passionately, I think is the word. Passionately. Who's changed the views he held passionately yesterday and could just as easily change again tomorrow or on May the 2nd. Diana's Panorama interview. You will ever be queen. <sighs> no, I don't. No. Why do you think that? I'd like to be a queen of people's hearts in people's hearts. The 1995 tell-all interview that the Princess of Wales did with Martin Bashir on the BBC show Panorama followed a number of embarrassing moments for the royal family, including her 1992 book Diana. Her true story and recordings of intimate conversations between Diana and James Gilby becoming public. The Panorama interview in which Diana famously said, well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. Do you think Mrs Parker Bowles was a factor in the breakdown of your marriage? Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. Also saw her call into question Charles's suitability for the throne and speak openly about her history of self-harm and bulimia. 
The footage is now so famous that it may be foolish to try and recreate it, but the interview is certainly an unavoidable tipping point, which led to Charles and Diana divorcing the following year. Public still supporter. her. When I say public, you're going into an engagement and there's a great many people there. Here the Dunblane Massacre. The 1996 tragedy in which a man entered a Scottish primary school and shot 16 children and one teacher dead, not only rocked the nation, but also had an interesting connection to the Queen. The perpetrator Thomas Hamilton had in fact written a letter to the Queen just days before the massacre, complaining that the Scout Association, an organization which the Queen is the patron of, had tarnished his name. Following the tragedy, the Queen attended a memorial service at Dunblane Cathedral with her daughter Princess Anne. Just as the Queen visiting Aberfan after the 1966 disaster made for a moving display of her public duty in season 3, her connection to the Dunblane incident may offer a similar moment. Tony Blair and New Labour. The May 1997 landslide win for Tony Blair began a new prime ministerial relationship for the Queen and ushered in the era of Cool Britannia under New Labour. By this time the Queen was 71 years old and had seen a great deal of change and new leadership in the country, but the fanfare and excitement which surrounded Blair was a stark contrast to the hatred much of the country had for Thatcher. The handover of Hong Kong. The colonial rule of Hong Kong, Britain's last major overseas territory, ended in July 1997, in an event which China termed the return. Though the retrocession is not as infamous as many of the dramatic royal family moments during the 90s, given that it is often considered as the definitive end of the British Empire, it is a fascinating moment for a monarch who has watched this empire slowly shrink. And the flag of China will fly over Hong Kong. Diana's death. The car accident that killed Princess Diana and her then-partner Dodi al fayed in August 1997, and the mixture of global mourning and public conspiracy that followed, is the dramatic moment everyone has long been anticipating on the crown. That said, it seems unlikely we will get this far in season 5, due to Morgan's 20-year rule, meaning the entire series is likely to end around 2000. Even if we do get to Diana's death in season 5, don't be surprised if they avoid recreating such a well-remembered moment as they did with Charles and Diana's wedding and choose instead to fill in the gaps around the tragedy. To get really ahead of ourselves for a moment, season 6 could include anything from the Good Friday Agreement in 1998 to the September 11th attacks and meeting of Prince William and Kate Middleton in 2001 and even the 2003 invasion of Iraq. Whatever moments in history they choose to focus on, there is plenty of darkness coming for the royal family. Two, one. Ah, did anyone blink? <laughs> Hope you liked that video and if you haven't subscribed this channel, do subscribe it and we will see you in the next video.